Hello again my little buddies. Ready to blend exposures using luminosity masks in Photoshop? We have taken photos of the exterior of a home in several different exposures. We used a tripod, but the tripod was moving around in the snow. That is not a problem for us because we are geniuses and we can solve any problem thrown our way. First we will open Adobe Bridge. Select all of the photos of the same shot in different exposures. Next head up to the Tools menu, then Photoshop. Then load files into Photoshop layers. Bridge will open Photoshop for you if it is not already running. This will bring the photos we have selected into one Photoshop file. Each photo will be its own layer. As you can see, they are all there. Now head back to Bridge and bring in the remaining bracketed photo sets. There's another set of the front of the home. Here is a set of the backyard. And here is a set of the back of the home. Well done. First we will start by putting the layers in the correct order. We would like for the darkest of the exposures to be at the top and the lightest at the bottom. Since our tripod was moving around, we will need to align these photos. Select all of the layers, click Edit, then Auto Align Layers. Make sure that Auto is selected and click OK. Wow! All of the layers are now aligned. Let's start blending them using luminosity masks. With the top layer selected, go into the Channels tab hold down the Command key and click RGB. This will make a selection based on luminosity. Head back to the Layers tab and click to make a layer mask over the top layer. Now we want a large soft brush for painting on the layer mask. Lower the opacity of the brush. Now we will just paint in the parts that seem a little too bright. Nothing seems too bright here, so let's merge the top two layers and create another luminosity mask. We lose quite a bit of color between these two exposures. We will just brush over the home to bring back in some color. There is also a bit of ghosting in the trees. This happens when the branches are moving in between photos. We can brush over the trees to get rid of that ghosting effect. Looks good merge the top two layers. Now let's blend in another overexposed photo. Back to Channels tab command click on RGB head back to the Layers tab. Create a layer mask on the top layer. Again, we have lost a lot of color in the brick. We can bring the detail back in by brushing in white on the layer mask. We will brush over the trees to remove the ghosting effect. We have now completed the exposure blending using luminosity masks. We need to crop off the transparent portions of the image. Those were created when we auto-aligned the layers. Usually this would not happen, but the damn tripod was moving around in the snow. That is reason number 36 that I hate winter. Now let's correct the contrast. Click to create a levels layer mask. While holding the option key, pull the left slider to the right until you start seeing black come through on the image. There. Now do the same for the right slider pull it to the left until you start seeing white come through on the image. We will not worry about white coming through in the sky because we will be replacing the sky with a beautiful blue sky. There. The contrast has been much improved. Let's go ahead and blend the other photos using luminosity masks. Here is another set of the front of the house. Put the darkest exposure at the top of the layer stack and the lightest at the bottom. The damn tripod was moving around in the snow again. Let's auto align the images. Now starting with the top layer, go to the channel tab and command click on RGB. Now create a layer mask on the top layer. We can use our large soft brush to brush over any areas that may look too bright. Also be sure to brush over the branches that may have been blowing in the wind. This will get rid of the ghosts. Who you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Now let's merge the top two layers and create another luminosity mask of the top merged layer. Brush white on the layer mask over any areas that are too bright or have lost any detail. 
Ghost bust out any ghosting in the tree branches. Now we need to crop off the transparent edges that were created due to our auto alignment. Now let's add some contrast. Click the levels icon in the adjustments tab. Hold the option key and drag the left slider back and forth until you see just a little of black. Now do the same with the right slider pull it left until you see a little bit of white. We will ignore the white in the sky because we are going to replace that with a blue sky. Next photo. Make sure the darkest image is on the top of the layer stack. We need to auto align the images due to the stupid snow. Create a luminosity mask of the top layer with the channels tab. Looks good merge the top two layers and create a luminosity mask on that merge layer. The trees look a little too light, we will brush over them lightly. Oh man, that little tire swing was swinging in the wind. We can fix that. Now clip off the transparent edges with the crop tool. Fix the contrast. Again, we won't worry about the sky because it will be replaced. Bye, Felicia. See how much better that looks. Now let's work on the back of the home. Put the underexposed image at the top and the overexposed image at the bottom of the layer stack. Start the luminosity mask routine. Oh, wait we forgot to align the images. Select all the layers and auto-align them. Whoa they were really off. Now let's start the luminosity mask routine. Brush over any areas that you feel are too bright and also brush over the trees. Merge the top two layers and do it all over again. That is way too bright and we have lost a lot of detail, but we can bring it back. Brush brush brush. Brush brush. Now let's crop off the transparent edges. Crop crop crop. Crop crop. To adjust the contrast, click on the level icons in the adjustments tab. Drag the sliders while holding the option key. See how much better that looks. Before contrast. After contrast. Okay, let's start back at the first photo for the finishing touches. We want to add in a blue sky so this photo isn't so depressing. I will choose these clouds. Now we will copy this image and paste it as a layer with the house image. Flatten the image, then make a copy of that image. Paste the clouds image onto its own layer. Now we will use transform to place the clouds where we would like them to be. That looks like a good spot for them. Now we want to put the layer with the clouds on it to be in between the house image and its copy layer. Add a layer mask to the top layer and then use the magic wand to select the white in the sky. Now we will paint inside the selection on the layer mask so that the blue sky and clouds will come through. Be sure to make your brush a little harder so that you don't end up putting some sky in the snow on the roof. Just one more reason why snow sucks. Now I will carefully brush in the sky without brushing over any snow on the roof. You can brush in a line by clicking somewhere, and then holding shift and clicking somewhere else. It will paint along the line from your first click to your second click. I can't wait for springtime. Then I won't have to deal with all these snow issues.
The damn tripod can't be stable in the snow, and I can't paint in a blue sky because of the snow on the roof. It's bullshit. Bullshit, I tell you. While I am brushing over the layer mask to bring the sky in, would you like to hear a joke? No? Well, too bad. Here's one. Where does a snowman keep his money? Do you know? Okay, give up yet. He keeps it in a snowbank. Ha 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 ha. Okay, here is another one. What do you get when you cross a snowman and a vampire? You give up yet. You get frostbite. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. I think all this snow is making me lose my mind like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. He is Johnny. Okay I think I have filled in all the blue sky. Now let's lower the opacity of the clouds layer to make it more believable. I am some sort of a wizard. I can take a drab nasty sky and turn it into a beautiful day. Here is proof that I am a wizard. Before. After. Now let's flatten the image and fix our converging verticals. See how the edges of the house appear to be leaning inwards? I know that this house is structurally sound, so let's straighten those vertical lines. Go to filter and then click on lens correction. It may take a moment to load. Now go to the custom tab at the top so that we can play with the vertical perspective slider. We will slide around until the vertical lines straighten up. The grid is very helpful in our mission. We can grab the grid and move it wherever we prefer. I try to line the grid lines up with the edges of the home. Everything looks great. Now what I would like to do is crop around the home so that it is given more focus. I will clip off the window on the right side so that does not catch my eye. And I will clip off part of the neighbor's home on the left. Looking good. Next thing that I like to do is add a little bit of saturation. And also I have made an action that adds an unsharp mask to sharpen the image and also resize it. There we go. Let's save and move on. No, wait. Let's get rid of this stupid alarm detection company sign. I wonder if this house really have an alarm system, or maybe they just put the sign in the yard to scare away any burglars. Alarm detection companies get the best free advertising by making these signs. Anyway. We are going to get rid of the sign because it's an eyesore. So, I am just using the stamp tool to try to bring back the bricks and bushes. Sign is gone, poof. Alright, now I think we are finished. Now, let's work on the second photo of the front of the home. We need to bring some blue sky into this home's life. Using transform, place the blue sky over the image. Then move the copy of the home image to the top of the layer stack. Use the magic wand to select the white sky. Now through the magic of technology, I will speed this part up. Wow, I am so fast. Now bring the opacity of the blue sky layer down a bit. There, that looks more natural. Adding a blue sky to the photos of your homes really improves everything. Life is good. Now let's fix the converging verticals with lens correction. Click on the custom tab towards the top. Now move the vertical perspective slider back and forth until you straighten those vertical lines of the home. You may want to pull back just a bit. Sometimes if you make the vertical lines completely vertical, the house will look like it is leaning forward and we don't want that. Much better. 
Now let's get rid of that alarm sign. I once heard a story of a burglar that broke into a home without an alarm system. The woman woke her husband and said, There's a burglar in the kitchen eating my homemade steak and kidney pie. The husband was worried and said, Oh no, should I call the police or an ambulance? Ha ha ha. Apparently, he did not enjoy his wife's cooking. Sign is gone. Let's crop off some of the edges to give more focus to the home. I will make sure to crop off the brick part of the front of the neighbor's home. There. Looking good. The image needs a bump up in the saturation department. Now I will use my action to add an unsharp mask and resize the image. All done let's save and move on. Let's brighten up this nasty weather with a bright blue sky. Make a copy of the image and then paste the sky onto its own layer. Now move the sky layer to the middle of the other two. Add a layer mask to the top layer. Use the magic wand to select the white sky. Brush black in the layer mask inside the selection that the magic wand made for us. That was easy. Now bring the opacity of the sky image down for a more natural look. Looking good. No sky. Sky. No sky. Sky. Okay that looks great. Let's just bump up the saturation, and use the action to sharpen the photo and resize it. That was easy PZ. That one is a keeper. Now that we have saved that image, let's move on to the last one of the back of the home. We need to add in our sky. I would like to flip the image so that the clouds are not uniform in each photo. Someone may catch onto my trickery and I don't want that. Just pull the clouds around with the transform tool. That should work. Now put the cloud layer in the middle and paint in your layer mask. Again, using the miracle of technology I will speed this part up. This snow is really screwing up my flow. There. Bring the cloud layer opacity down. Very natural and beautiful, just like me. Gross day. Great day. Now let's correct the converging verticals with lens correction under filter. Hit up the custom tab. Slide the vertical perspective slider around until the vertical lines are straight. Again, you may want them to still be slanted in a little bit so it is more believable. Let's try to mess with the horizontal perspective slider. No. Things are not straightening up how I would like them to. Let's rotate the image a little bit. Here is another trick to straighten your photo. With the pen tool, create a path along a line that you would like to be exactly straight. I would like for this edge towards the center of the home to be perfectly vertical. Then head up to image, then image rotation. Click on arbitrary. Photoshop will choose an angle to make that path completely straight up and down. Let's go back into lens correction and see what we can do now. Head back to the custom tab. We can also rotate the image at the angle function towards the bottom of the custom tab. It isn't easy to wrangle using the line in the middle of that tiny circle. Let's type in the number we would like. You can also use the arrow keys to bump the angle up or down in very small increments. Now that edge is straight up and down. OK vertical perspective, don't fail me now. Very nice. Amazing. We can adjust the angle just slightly. Perfect man.
Now let's crop off the neighbor's house to the right, the black line across the bottom, and a little of the neighbor's house to the left. This really steers our focus to the house. Another damn alarm detection services sign. Let's use the stamp tool to get rid of that sign. I'm not sure how I feel about that branch in the yard. Let's use the patch tool to clean up a bit. I'm guessing the landscapers don't come during the winter months. What a great looking image. Now bump up the saturation, sharpen the image, and resize it. I am doing that using my custom actions. All done easy peasy. We can now close out of Photoshop. And close out of Adobe Bridge. Let's sit back and admire our fabulous work. Here are the original photos taken at various exposures. And here is our final result. We blended the exposures, added a blue sky, increased saturation, corrected the converging verticals and sharpened the image. Oopsie. Here are the original photos of the other set of the front of the home, and here is the final result. Majestic. Now the original set of the backyard, and the final blended version of the backyard set. Lastly, here are the original photos of the back of the home, and here is our final piece of art. We have really outdone ourselves this time. Thank you for helping me blend these exposures using luminosity masks. I couldn't have done it without you. Come back whenever you feel lonely. I will always be here for you. All of my love.